Um, yeah, my name is Ji Hai. Um, I'm quite happy to be invited to join this conference uh, to share my experience on DevOps. Uh, today, the topic is uh, uh, implementation of DevOps CCOPs in large global banks. Okay. So here are the content for my presentation. Uh, firstly, uh, I will introduce myself. Uh, next, I um, will give you some background about Devil C Corps. Uh, the third one, uh, I will talk about the Devil C Corps current status and also uh, the challenge to implement the Devil C Corps. Uh, the next one, uh, I will also show some like Devil C Corps tools, uh, especially for the SARS, uh, DAS, and S. But finally, uh, I will share my experience. Uh, how to implement the Devil C Corps uh, in HIBC Bank, and also how to establish the, the culture over there. Okay, uh, here's me. Um, so actually, I graduated from Imperial College London as a Imperial uh, as a PhD, um, probably more than ten years ago. Yeah, uh, and actually, my major was the the mobile communications. So it's like the mobile communications. My, my research was 4G before, but now you know it's a 5G world. Now it's all 5G. So yeah. And then when, when I finished uh, my study and started to work in the banks, uh, such as like RBS, uh, UBS, uh, Barclays, and HIBC. So I started to work on uh, DevOps work uh, in Barclays since 2012. And then joined HIBC uh, in 2016, uh, and the transfer to China office, uh, from London office to China office uh, in 20, 2018, and started to lead the DevOps transformation in China. And end of last year, um, I started to join Tencent as a senior DevOps architect. So yes, yeah, so just here's my my background. Okay, uh, DevOps CCOPs. Uh, I believe many people probably know DevOps already, yeah. But uh, maybe not many people, you know, very few people know what is a DevOps CCOPS. Uh, in one word, you know, DevOps CCOPS is uh, the DevOps plus cybersecurity, yeah. So why we need the cybersecurity in the Dev DevOps? So I, okay, so let's start from like uh, you know what what is a DevOps CCOPS. Uh, actually, this term uh, was created uh, quite a long time ago. Uh, originally, it was called DevOps Seek. Um, I heard about that, you know, probably that two reasons uh, people change the name to DevOps Seekops. So the one reason is, uh, uh, you know, the, the short name for the DevOps Seek uh, is a DOS. Uh, you know, there's another network attack called DDoS, so which was similar to this, this name. So in order to not to have a duplicate names, you know, people start to change the name to DevOps CCOPS. Another reason I heard about that uh, is, uh, you know, the DevOps Seek, uh, it's, uh, it's still follow the traditional way uh, for the cybersecurity, which means we do the, uh, the Dev first and the operations. And finally, before you release to the production, we they, they do the devil, the cyber security assessment. So in order to have some you know something new, you know people put the security in the in the middle, uh, which means the cyber security should cover the whole DevOps process. You know similar to this figure uh, on this page, you know you can it's easy to see you know the cyber security should cover the whole pro the whole DevOps process. And the, the main purpose for Dell C Corps uh, is to left the shift to left, sh the shift to left the cybersecurity uh, to the development the development areas. Yeah. So very similar to our DevOps, you know, we shift to left the testing, we shift to left the operations. So for Dell C Corps, we shift to left the cybersecurity. And uh, it's it's aimed to for everyone, you know, you try to get everyone. To respond for the cybersecurity, uh, not only the cybersecurity department. Okay, 
So now you know. Let's go back to why why we need Dev Secops. Why we need do why we need to do this, right? Uh, you know, here I use one example. You know, uh, try to and uh, try to explain how we need, why we need the Dev Secops. So there's one figure on the top. Uh, you know, that this that's one example. You know, it's just one example. So on top, a, so we we can see there's a traditional uh, traditional development process. So for we it takes like three weeks for the whole uh, development process. Like we gather the requirements, we do the design, we do the coding, we do the testing. So finally, it's ready to be released to the production. Yeah, and also and then before we release to the production, uh, it takes like one week for the cyber security assessment. Yeah. Okay, so by doing the DevOps, I uh, will try to reduce the de development process by using uh, probably the automations or microservice or agile methodologies, you know, whatever, you know, we try, we try to use different way, you know, to reduce the whole development process. So for example, the, for the figure in the middle, you can see uh, we reduce three weeks into one week. So make, we'll make it faster, yeah. But the original DevOps, it didn't consider the cybersecurity. So for the cybersecurity assessment, it's still one week. So now you can see, you know, it's easy to now it's easy to see the bottleneck for the whole the delivery delivery process. Yeah, so it's easy to see the bottleneck. So you know the whole purpose for DevC Corps now is try to is try to further reduce uh, the whole process, you know, by reducing you know this uh, period of cybersecurity assessment. Yeah. So like the figure on, on the third figure, so we try to reduce the the cyber security assessment to further reduce the whole the whole process to make it faster. Okay, so I think this this uh, this example, you know, I, I hope you can easily understand you know, why we need the Dev Secops you know, from this example. Okay, so the next one, let's see the benefit. Uh, I think the first one uh, we have talked about this already from this example, you know. By using by implement you know implementing the DLC cops, it make it faster, uh, make it the whole process faster, right? And the second benefit, uh, control risk. What does it mean? Uh, originally, you know, we uh, for the team they rely on the cyber security team or cyber security department to do the cyber security assessment. You know, try to find the vulnerabilities, yeah, before you release release to the production. But by doing the uh, uh, the Dev Secops, uh, the developer and also the tester can also find the vulnerabilities earlier, yeah. So, so we can see like you know it's under control, but uh, and under control by the developer and the tester. It's not only rely on the cybersecurity teams. Okay, so the third one is cost of saving. Uh, what does that mean? So it means like you know when you find the vulnerabilities uh, late at late at later stage for example you know traditionally on um, before release to the production if you found the vulnerability at this stage yeah uh you ha you have to re feedback to developer for developer to fix these vulnerabilities and then you have to go through the whole process again yeah and if you found vulnerabilities again you have to feedback Fix the, the problem again and and go through the whole process again. So you can see like if you know if you can if you can find the vulnerabilities earlier at early stage, not the late stage. For example, we found the vulnerabilities at the coding stage or at testing stage, and then you know for developer to fix the problem earlier, then we don't have to go back, right? So this means you know we can save the cost. Okay, so you know there's too many benefits now, and only list the three key points. You know, key point benefits we can we can get from the Dev Secops. Okay, next one, uh, I will talk about some like Dev Secops uh, current status, and also is the challenge. Uh, there's one Dev Secops community uh, in Singapore. It published the Dev Secops report uh, every year. Uh, since 2017, so now uh, you know the the data I show here is mainly come from this report. 
So from the recent reports, uh, it show shows that, like the Dev C Corp's activities uh, mainly come from like the technology and the financial industry. Yeah, so it's uh, you know for these two areas, it's uh, it cover like almost half of the Dev C Corp's activities, which means there's a much de there's much demand for of the Dev C Corp's from the technology and the and the financial industry. Okay, next one. Uh, this figure is where it's very interesting. Uh, when I did DevOps before, uh, many people asked me one question. You know, they asked me like, you know, you guys put Dev and Ops together. You know, so what was the what's the most reasonable and uh, the best number, or the best ratio between the developer and the operations guy? So to be honest, you know, there's no right answer for this. Yeah. And now, you know, when I'm, do, I'm working on the DevC course, people still ask me the same question, you know, what was the reasonable and probably the best ratio between developer operation and the cybersecurity guy? Yeah, to be honest, I don't, I don't know the right answer. Yeah, and I don't, I don't also don't believe there's a right answer. But in the, in the reports, I think based on the research, uh, they give, I think they give some reference. So here is the number they give to us. For example, if there are 100 developers, they probably like 10 operations and, only, and it is only one cybersecurity guard. Yeah. So it means like, you know, normally in the, in the company, uh, there, there, there are not too many cybersecurity people or it means it's a lack of the cybersecurity people. The first time I saw this number, uh, I'm trying to find the, the, the same situation in HSBC. And fin finally, I found Oh, it's even one. It's an even worse number. So there, there, there are like two hundred developers uh, in HIBC with only one cybersecurity guy. So like two hundred to one. Yeah. So you can see like actually in HIBC we we, we are lack of cybersecurity people. Yeah. So based on this, actually, uh, I even have some some thoughts myself. Uh, you know, for like. I'm, I'm probably thinking. I'm thinking like my, when my kids grow up, I probably will ask him to to learn cybersecurity. Yeah, probably to go to college to learn cybersecurity because you know there are not many people working on this. Maybe it's easy to find a job. Yeah, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the next figure is also quite interesting. Um, actually, it's a, it's a show like many people believe cybersecurity is important. But it's probably only half of people do something. Yeah, people, you know, it's a still it's still only like a based on the word, based on the talking. You know, people only talk about the cybersecurity, but not not many people working on that. Uh, to be honest, I think in the real world, in the practical practical work, uh, the number probably is is much even lower than this. Yeah. Okay, so this this figure show like you know the most popular Dell C Corp tools, uh, you know, be used in the company like a web uh, application firewall, a container, and image cybersecurity tools. Uh, open source tools, I think, currently it's become more and more popular. Yeah, uh, static application tools. Uh, this is mainly used for the source code, and also dynamic application tools. So I will, uh, later I will talk about tools uh, in details and I um, will share more information, you know, how we use the tools uh, to, to implement DevC Corps. Okay, the challenge. Um, similar to DevOps, you know, uh, for DevC Corps, uh, I feel it's probably even harder to, to implement DevC Corps. Yeah, because the cybersecurity cyber uh, is too far away from the business. It's too far away from the business. Yeah, sometimes you know before when the DevOps, you know, not many people don't, you know, don't care about this, uh, because you know people only care about the delivery, the business delivery. But now even for DevOps Corp, I think it's even harder for DevOps Corps. Yeah. Okay. I think the challenge uh, mainly comes from two areas. So one is the, the technical challenge. So because the DevOps Corps is very new. Concept, 
uh, so far, uh, there are not too many uh, products available on the market. Yeah, it's not many tools or technologies uh, for the DevC Corps on the market. Uh, also, it's, it's even for the existing tools or existing products uh, for the DevC Corps, it's still not mature enough. For example, uh, for the, the scanning results, you know, the, 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 the result is not accurate enough. So, the, so for this, uh, this area, the technology or these tools are still not not too too much metro. Okay, uh, this is a tech, technical challenge. Uh, but I, but then based on my experience, you know the most challenge uh, actually come from the people, come from the, the culture. What does that mean? You know most of the people, uh, especially for the developer, many developers, uh, you know they don't believe the cyber security uh, is their job. You know, they believe you know the cyber security is a is a, is a security department job. It's not that you know for developer they only need to focus on coding. Yeah, I think this a you know it's a traditional way. You know, people only believe you know developer only working on on the coding. Uh, but even for the people you know who have this mindset already, you know, for the developer, uh, they if they believe the cyber security is important, sometimes they found they probably don't have enough knowledge or skills you know, to fix these vulnerabilities. Yeah, this is another problem. Uh, also, uh, another big problem, I think currently for DevOps uh, is from the senior management. You know, similar to the DevOps, uh, when we try to promote the DevOps in the company, uh, it's the best method is from top to down. It's from top to down, yeah. You, if your senior management support DevOps, uh, you know it will be easy, you know, to implement or promote DevOps across the whole company. Yeah, similar to DevOps Corps, uh, because again, uh, many people, many se senior management, they more care about the business, the business delivery. So again, like I mentioned already, the cyber security is too far away from the business. So not not too many senior management, you know, they have the mindset, you know, regarding, you know, we need to focus on the cyber security. We need to introduce cyber security into our DevOps process. So, you know, this is another key challenge, you know, we need to convince the senior management first, you know, and then it will be easy to promote and implement the cyber, uh, the DevOps Corps. Okay, so let's take one example from you know my 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 example. You know, uh, like I mentioned, I started to do the DevOps Corps uh, in 2018. I think probably in July or August. Uh, it's my first time to present, you know, to share this DevOps Corps in the senior management board in HIBC China. You know, I talked to you know the, I think at the moment of the more than 20 senior management in the in the meeting. And share with them, you know, the DevOps Corps. I still remember, like, you know, two years ago, there's only one senior manager. He supported my idea. Yeah, you know, one out of twenty, only one supported my DevOps Corps idea. Yeah, so it's our challenge. And uh, later, uh, after half a year, you know, during the half a year, uh, I tried to, you know, do some pilot to get some pilot to 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 do the DevOps Corps. And then we, we get some achievement from this pilot team. And finally, uh, as I remember in January 2019, uh, my, this, it's my second time to share this DevOps Corps in the senior management teams. So at the moment, because we got some achievement already, yeah, and it's probably it's easy to convince the senior management. So I still remember at the moment, almost half, almost half of the senior management, you know, they, they support my idea. They, they have interest in, in the DevOps Corps. And later, uh, this year, 20, 2020, uh, you know, for the whole HIBC, the DevOps Corps become the top one, you know, high priority, you know, the, the work, for, you know, people need to start to implement in their department. So you can see, you know, gradually, you know, we, 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 we try to implement the DevOps Corps and also the senior management is very important for the whole, you know, DevSecOps implementation. 
Okay. Okay, next one, um, we'll probably talk about the DevOps C-Corp tools, uh, which is very important because, you know, uh, for DevOps or, or DevOps C-Corps, I still believe, you know, the first the step is to implement the tool first, and then probably the people and culture. Okay, for DevOps C-Corp tools, uh, it's, main, it's normally we classify them into four different categories. Uh, the first one is the static application security testing tools, which means it's mainly first on the source code. It scans the source code based on the rules and find the, the, the code don't follow these cyber security rules, yeah, like SQL injection, something like that. Uh, for the second one is the dynamic application security testing tools. For these kind of tools, they try to uh, follow the hacker behavior. So the hacker behavior try to attack your website, attack your interface, you know, try to get something they want. For example, your username or password. Yeah. So this one is similar to the, your testing case. Uh, you need to produce some test, some, some, you need to produce some security testing case. Yeah, to simulate the hacker behavior. Okay, the third one is the interactive applications security testing. Uh, this one is, uh, is is install some agent in your applications or use the prox proxy. Yeah, when your application is running, uh, they try to capture some data and try to do some analysis to see whether or not there's a vulnerabilities or thread in your application. Okay, the last one is uh, is for the open source uh, security tools. So you know when we try, when we do the coding or when we try to uh, release some some products we, we sometimes we need to introduce some some third party la library third party uh, tools or third party package or third party plugin so how we can guarantee you know the, the this uh, library or tools from third party they are secure enough yeah so this is the reason why we need this tool to scan for this kind of work okay so let's talk about this tool in details uh, you can see from this uh, this figure, uh, we try to uh, you know measure the different tools from different angle. For the SaaS, this is a static application security testing tool we call SaaS. For the SaaS, it's uh, like the white box. Yeah, like I mentioned already, it is scanned source code. Yeah, so for this kind of tool, uh, it's easy to to find to discover the vulnerabilities, and also it can easy to track. The source, like which level code, resulting in these vulnerabilities. Yeah, and also for this tool, it's easy to be accepted uh, by the developer because it's a coding basis. Yeah, it's because it's mainly about source code. However, the disadvantage for this tool, uh, it has very high false positive rate. Yeah, so because this this disadvantage. Normally, uh, people have to spend time to review the results to see how accurate the result it is. Yeah, and this will result in you know much labor cost because people have to review this. Also, the scanning speed uh, will become slower uh, when your coding your your line of code is increased. Yeah, and finally, uh, this tool uh, it need to support different language. Yeah, so also make it more complex. Okay, the next two is uh, we call DAS. Uh, like I mentioned already, you know, this is, uh, uh, this is try to simulate the, the high curve behavior. Yeah, so it's a, it's a black box. Yeah, and uh, this tool has a large testing coverage and the, also be able to do the business, uh, the business vulnerability logic, uh, the business logical uh, scanning. And also it has lower false positive rate. Yeah. But the disadvantage for this tool uh, is also it's not it's also a lot. Uh, because as I mentioned already, this is similar to your testing case. You need to produce your security testing case to simulate the hacker behavior. So this requires you know the people, uh, you know, uh, the professional cybersecurity knowledge and skills. For you to be able to produce this uh, security testing case, yeah. So, so this is not easy, and also uh, 
it's not easy because it's black box. It's not easy to discover the vulnerability source. So the, we know the problem, but we don't know why cause this problem. Yeah. And finally, uh, this too also bring a lot of dirty data. So sometimes you have to clean the data in your database. Yeah. Okay, the next one is a uh, uh, interactive application security testing tool. We normally call ads. Ast. So this is this is what we call like green box. <laughs> The before is white box, black box. You know, this one called green box. So like I mentioned already, it's use some agent and proxy to analyze the data in the system. But this tool is also easy and fast to find your vulnerabilities. Yeah, and also it has very very, very low false positive rates, and also easy to track uh, the vulnerability source. Uh, the disadvantage for this tool, uh, it's not a much. Uh, for example, like when the, when the agent is upgrade or is updated, the the web server also need to reboot. Yeah, so this will result in like the the, the a bit higher the deployment cost. Also for the est, so it's, we can't do the business logical vulnerability scanning. So you know and and, and try you know to to share the tools you know. Uh, try to find more, you know, what was the good for the two and what's the what, uh, you know, negative thing for the two. So people can, you know, you can compare the different two to see, you know, which one is, uh, is good for your scenario. Okay, here is uh, the tools, for the different tools, you know, available on the market. Uh, for the SaaS, uh, the most popular one, uh, you know, just based on my, my experience, is Check Mars and Fortify. Uh, also, we have uh, the IBM App Scan. For the DAS and S, uh, there's two called HP Web Inspect, and also there's one open source tool called OWASP. Uh, Contrast is the one S two on the market. For the first two, uh, there's a one called Sonatap IQ Server, and another one called GFrog uh, I Stream. Uh, I didn't list here. Uh, there's one called Dependence Check which is the open source tool from OWASP. Okay, and uh, for this uh, several secret, uh, the, the Devil SQL tools, currently uh, it's mainly focused on the two stage. So, so like the, the SaaS and the FOSS tool, uh, mainly focus on the coding stage. Yeah, uh, one for the source code, one for the third party, like whatever library or, or or all these uh, tools. And for the DAS and S, it's mainly first on the testing stage. Yeah, like I mentioned already, is a uh, try to, you produce a security testing uh, keys uh, to simulate hacker behavior, uh, or you use the agent and the proxy, you know, to capture the data to analyze the vulnerabilities. Okay. Uh, Finally, I'm probably share you know how how we implement the Dell C Corps in uh, in HSBC uh, and also how we establish the culture over there. So before you know we talk about more background, uh, the challenge and also tools. Now let's see some 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 example some keys. Okay, firstly, uh, we we set up some model, uh, you know, for the Dell C Corps. The one we call it is a called implementation model. Uh, it's quite easy. It's, uh, the first phase is is to implement the cybersecurity tools. So like we, we mentioned before, the tools we mentioned before, we introduce some tools like check marks, uh, Sonar type echo server, you know, try to integrate, integrate these tools into our CICD pipeline to automate the process. Yeah, for any tool we introduce here, you know, all of them need, need to be automated. Yeah. And for developer and tester, you know, they only see the result. They only see the, the dashboard or the, the result from dashboard or the reported reports. The second phase, you know, we we try to provide some training uh, for people to you know to, to establish the mindset, establish the knowledge. Yeah. So we we use three different methods, like uh, there's a study material in the tools. And also, the, we also provide some online training course and online training games uh, called Security Core Warrior. I will talk about this later. And also, the cybersecurity department 
provide the cybersecurity like consultancy to help the team to use the tools and also try to fix the bugs. And finally, you know, by using the tools to discover discover the vulnerabilities and by probably training, you know, for people to have enough knowledge to fix the vulnerabilities. Yeah, we try to and then we try to you know to set up you know some kind of produce some kind of cybersecurity experts or we call cybersecurity champion in the team. Yeah. So this is this is the implementation model and the final goal is try to produce some some cybersecurity champion or cybersecurity expert. Okay, how how we do this? Yeah, so we have different role in, in this model. So this, the DevC called champion, uh, this role we try to bring the cybersecurity department and the de development team together uh, and to just one word, like, try to make this happen. Yeah, try to make this happen. Similar to the product manager, just make it happen. Yeah, and for the cybersecurity team, you know, on the right, like I mentioned before, they probably the tools, they probably the training, and they also probably the consultancy, try to help the development teams, you know, to 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 get this their C corp skills, and the, the the finally the the development teams, you know, when they try to use the tools, when they try to get the training, yeah, in their project, in the real project, so with the time, so you know they try. I think they get to use about this uh, the Dev C Corp concept. So this is the whole model, you know, we try to um, as make it happen, make the Dev C Corp happen in the HIBC. Okay, so this is one example, uh, like I mentioned before, we need to integrate the the the, the service Dev C Corp tools into our CD pipeline to automate the process. So here's the example, you know, we integrate the check marks, uh, which is one SAS tool into the Jenkins to automate the process. Uh, the, first, the first step, you, you need to install a, a Checkmarks Jenkins plugin. Yeah. So once you install the plugin, uh, there's two different methods you can, you can automate the process. One will use the traditional way, uh, the free scale jobs. So once you install the, the plugin, uh, you can find that there's one additional tab in the build section called Executing uh, Checkmarks Scan. You select this uh, this uh, option, and then you fill the form. You you, you configure this form by in input like the checkmask server URL, uh, the credential information, and also your source code location, something like that. And then you know this, this you finish when you finish the configuration, you can trigger this job. Yeah. Another another way uh, you can use uh, what they call like pipeline as a code. So use this uh, code. You know to 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 configure the whole process, yeah. So there's two different ways. You know, is 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 saying. Uh, finally, we will trigger this job. We will trigger this pipeline. Uh, you can see it, it will scan the code. Yeah, it will trigger the, the check mark to scan the code. And finally, it will produce a report uh, similar to the figure on the on the right, on the bottom right. You can see. You know, they will find the vulnerabilities from different level. Okay, so next one is a, a, is, is a tool we used before called check marks. Uh, on the top, you can see that the one figure, uh, it classified the vulnerabilities uh, into three different categories, like high level vulnerabilities, uh, media level vulnerabilities, and, uh, and the low level vulnerabilities. So normally, uh, the rules we deal with the different the vulnerabilities is uh, if you have any any high level vulnerabilities, you need to fix this before you release to the production. Yeah, so before you release the production, you have to fix all high level vulnerabilities. Yeah, no argument. Yeah, that's, that's all of them. And also for the media level vulnerabilities, we normally give the team a certain time, for example, like one month. Yeah, so you can release to the production, but within one month, you have to fix all these media level vulnerabilities. Okay, and for the low level vulnerabilities, we normally you know consider this as a technical debt, the technical debt. So which means you know when you have time, uh, when you have free resource, then you can start to reduce this low level 
uh, vulnerabilities. Yeah. Okay. And on the left of it, you can see another figure, which means you know, from this two, uh, you can easily to find which line of code, which line of your code, you know, resulting in these vulnerabilities. So I think it's very good too. You know, you, you can track the, the source of these vulnerabilities. Okay, similar, another tool called uh, Sonar Type Echo Server. You know, this is for the third party, you know, open source, uh, like uh, the, the open source tool scan. So it, it's also similar to classify the, this, uh, uh, this vulnerabilities into three different category. And also it's even scan the license, you know, to see whether or not it's out of date. Okay, so these are, these are two tools like uh, Checker Mouse and uh, Sonar Type Echo Server. We introduce, uh, we use in HIPC uh, at uh, the, the coding stage and also uh, for the source code and also for this uh, uh, third party, the third party library and, and tools. So here are the, some training we provide for the people. The first one is the, the train, the study tutorial in the tools, for example, in the check marks. So for this example, you know, if you click on the question mark, it will, it will show you some information, uh, for example, like what's the risk for these vulnerabilities and what causes vulnerabilities. Uh, and even it gives you some example how you fix these vulnerabilities. Yeah. So this, I think this uh, set of material from tools is very useful for developer, you know, when they scan, uh, scan their code, when they found their vulnerabilities, then uh, they, just, they just need to follow this example uh, to easily fix the vulnerabilities, yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, we also provide some online training course uh, for the Devil CCOP training. Uh, as I remember, uh, as as uh, we had, I think at, at more than fifty courses, yeah. And it's for different roles, like for example, for business analyst, for developers, uh, for architect, for tester, something like that. And also it, have, it had different level of the courses. Yeah, so people can learn, learn the knowledge, not the level C of knowledge from this online training course. Also, we, uh, we provide an online training platform called Security Code Warrior. Uh, this is very, uh, it's quite interesting uh, tools. It's uh, try to, uh, how to say, produce a story, <laughs> Told you a story, and then behind the story, uh, it's try to teach you and uh, let you to to learn the cybersecurity knowledge. For example, uh, in this case, it show like uh, there's some hacker from Purdue uh, try to attack uh, the people or server in, in the UK, and uh, at the this story, uh, the, the the hacker probably goes through this from some code, and then you know you ask you to see you know what was the vulnerability from this code and you know you can see on the left uh, that, that there are some options you can you can you can select so by using this uh, this uh, this platform i think probably it's a uh, it's easy and also it's not it's not boring you know for people to learn this uh, cyber security okay uh you know before we talk about tools we talk about you know this uh, the online training uh, courses uh, you know, just for the people to learn these skills. Uh, you know, in order to establish the culture in the company for people to have more awareness about the cybersecurity, we also, uh, you know, produce some like that's like events, like this security coding competition. Yeah. So we we launched this in in the office and also in in China office uh, last year. Yeah. So the whole purpose is uh, for people, you know to have strong awareness about cybersecurity. Yeah. I remember uh, last year, you know, as, as I remember we have more than 100 developers to join this game. Yeah. And try to, you know, to answer the questions to, to, to I think the, the basic on this, the, this platform. Yeah. Uh, and then you, you try to answer more questions and to get high mark to win the game. Okay. So finally, uh, this is our maturity model. Um, what does it mean? Um, you know, before, I'm not sure you still remember, you know, I'll show you one example why we need DevSecOps. Do you still remember, you know, 
is you know the traditional way DevOps DevOps way and DevOps ops way. You know why we need DevOps ops. But finally, we need, we need to get the benefit for the teams by further reduce this uh, cybersecurity assessment, right? So how we do this? You know, before we talk about, we introduce tools to find the vulnerabilities. We provide training for people to have enough knowledge and skills to fix the vulnerabilities, right? At coding and testing stage. But how we can reduce the, the cybersecurity assessment, yeah? If you don't reduce this, this period, you know, people don't get benefit from this, right? So this, this, this is the reason why we need this Dell CCOPS maturity model. Uh, so here's just one, one simple example I show here. Uh, actually, the document, the document for this maturity model, uh, as I remember, is more than 30 pages. Yeah, it has very much detailed information in documents to show, you know, which level, for example, level one, uh, which condition you need to meet, level two, which condition you meet. Here, I just give you one simple example, uh, you know, to show how you meet how you meet the different level. Yeah. So normally, uh, this is how we run this DevOps CCOP, the whole DevOps CCOP scheme in the HIBC. Like I mentioned already, we provide the tools, we provide the training, yeah, for people to get knowledge. Yeah. So how we define our DevOps CCOP teams? Yeah. So when, if your team is a, is a measure to become a, a DevOps CCOP teams, then the cybersecurity teams will reduce the cybersecurity assessment, probably like, for example, from five days, from one week, like five working days to two working days or three working days, because they believe you have done some cybersecurity cyber job in the coding and testing area, so they can trust you, you know, so they don't have to do too much work at cybersecurity assessment, yeah? So how we measure you know, your maturity model. So normally, uh, we have two con conditions for a team to be defined as a DevOps CCOPS team. So one condition is all the people in the team, you know, all the people in the team, they need to pass level one. They need to pass level one for all the people. So which means all the developers, all the testers, they need to study the uh, fundamental the fundamental cybersecurity knowledge, or they need to know how to use the cybersecurity, tool, cybersecurity tools at the fundamental level. Yeah. So if they have this uh, basic level, when they're coding, uh, which is produce a code, I think they, have, they will have more awareness, you know, to award these vulnerabilities. And, the and also when they try to, uh, when, when they use the tools to find vulnerabilities, at the least they have the basic level to fix the vulnerabilities. So it, the first condition requires all the people in the team, they need to have these fundamental skills. Okay, this is condition number one. The, the second condition is uh, at, at least in the team, in the team at least, you need to have one, at least one people need to pass level three, which means you need to have at least one people to be recognized as cybersecurity champion or cybersecurity expert uh, in your team. So this guy, uh, when when the the, the the team found the vulnerabilities and and other people can't fix the vulnerabilities, so is this this guy's job to help team to fix these vulnerabilities? Yeah, to become become the expert in the team, right? So if you meet these two conditions, all the people pass level one, at least one guy pass level three, then we recognize your team is a DevOps CCOP team. So if you are recognized as a DevOps CCOP team, and based on your level, your maturity level, the cybersecurity department or cybersecurity team will reduce, you know, the cybersecurity assessment I mentioned before, you know, this in the example, this is one week cybersecurity assessment. This will be reduced based on your maturity model. Yeah, so based on your maturity level. Yeah, so, uh, okay. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Yeah, so this is how it works, you know, in HIBC. So like I mentioned, we introduce tools to find the vulnerabilities. We provide training for people to have enough skills and knowledge to fix the vulnerabilities, and also to pr produce experts in the team. Finally, 
you know, we try, we use this metric model to measure your team. So all your people, all the people in the team, they need to pass level one. At least the one people need to pass level three. So once you've done this, we recognize you you are a DevC Corp teams. Yeah. And also based on your DevC Corp's maturity level, the the DevC uh, the cybersecurity department will try to reduce the cybersecurity assessment period. Yeah, even probably to zero days to make it faster. Yeah. So I hope you understand the logic behind this. You know, this is how we implement DLC calls and how to get people, you know, to benefit from this. Okay, uh, I think that's all my my presentations. Uh, hope you you know you 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 learn something from this. And if you have any questions, you're free to ask me. Okay, thank you.